You know the business. And I know the chemistry. How well does Breaking Bad really know its chemistry? In this video, we'll examine three of Walt's most iconic chemistry tricks and decide if they're legit. But sorry, no fulminated mercury. We tried. Our first somewhat sketchy feat occurs in the pilot, and Walt is put in a sticky situation by a pair of drug dealers looking to learn his formula. In this scene, Walt combines solid red phosphorus with boiling water, generating a large explosion that creates toxic phosphine gas. To test the validity of this procedure, we cut off the heads of several packs of red-tipped matches, which contain red phosphorus, and place them in a small flask. We added boiling water to the flask, and... Nope. Red phosphorus does indeed combine with hydrogen to form phosphine gas, but this would not occur in water. It would require a highly pressurized environment of pure hydrogen gas. While it may have been better off with white phosphorus, which is significantly more reactive than red phosphorus, and reacts spontaneously in the presence of oxygen. Unfortunately for Walt, it's about as likely that Crazy 8 is actually a zombie as it is that he is suffering from the effects of inhaled phosphine gas. Better watch out, Albuquerque. In this next dubious bit of chemical resourcefulness, Walt and Jesse save themselves from an untimely death in the middle of the Nevada desert by creating a battery from car parts and using it to jumpstart their broken RV. They create this battery by dividing a tub in half with a sponge soaked in potassium hydroxide solution. On one side of the sponge are nuts, bolts, coins, and other forms of galvanized zinc. On the other is powder of mercuric oxide. We tried as best we could to create a replica of this battery. We didn't have mercuric oxide, so we used cupric oxide, a close alternative. As you can see, the battery is indeed functional, producing a certain amount of voltage. While this voltage is not near enough to start an RV, only about one twelfth of the required amount, enough of these cells connected in series could indeed provide enough voltage to start the vehicle. However, voltage is not the only consideration. You must also look at current. The voltmeter tells us that this cell is producing about 3 amps of current. Sources tell us that about 300 amps of current are required to start an RV. There is no way to connect cells in series in such a way that current increases, which is what Walt and Jesse do in the show. The only question now is, will this supply enough current? And how many cells will we need? Therefore, this cell is about 100 times underpowered, meaning that regardless of slight differences between Walt and Jesse's battery and ours, nobody is getting anywhere near to starting an RV. Too bad. In this third and final venture into the outer reaches of chemical possibilities, Walt and Jesse burn clean through a lock by igniting a substance called thermite. So, uh, what's this stuff called again? Thermite. Thermite is obtained by mixing a metal powder with a metal oxide. To test whether Walt and Jesse's methylamine heist would actually have been successful, we put a bolt in a bed of thermite and ignited the thermite to see if the bolt would melt. The reaction you see here is highly exothermic, but it also has a high activation energy. This means that although the powder will not spontaneously combust, upon being ignited a reaction occurs that produces a large amount of energy. enough energy, however, to melt through several inches of solid metal? While our bolt didn't exactly emerge unscathed, had it been a lock, it certainly wouldn't have been broken. As with the battery, thermite ignition is real chemistry that was applied on too large a scale in breaking down. Uh, 
So we're three for three on busting Breaking Bad's myths. But that's okay. Nobody really watched it for the chemistry anyway. Really?